Show me how. I'm going to show you how to do a brake job on a Sprinter van. 2019 and later, this is a 2021. I'll show you the tools I used. Um, so here's the, <laughs> these are laughable. These impact, cordless impact drivers, half inch, 18 millimeter socket. That is the factory uh, tire iron, the lug nut uh, socket that comes with the car. I've got a C-clamp. I've got a plate, since for the dual caliper, kind of keep them straight, wire to hang on the uh, caliper if you want. Just be coordinated and don't let it drop. These are some hex nuts I was checking for size. I can't find my socket hex, so I'm using just a basically regular Allen wrench, six millimeter um, with a closed in uh, 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 wrench, you know crescent wrench closed end okay and then i'm using this chisel or the screwdriver to loosen up the uh, pull away the uh, threaded portion of the bolts that hold the caliper here's the pads this is what i was looking at okay i got these duralast i wanted more uh, high-end ones or uh, a more expensive version these were 32 home uh, auto zone and then here's the original and you can see, obviously, the difference is gargantuous. This is after 50,000 miles, believe it or not. A lot of highway miles. Okay, and I got my dirty gloves. Okay, so let's get to work. Okay, I'm going to try to capture you the funniest part of this video. This is a an all exclusive all right so i loosen some of these lug nuts okay and what you want to do i loosen more than what i show but okay so here's two of them that i already loosened all right what you want to do is keep the wheel down on the ground a little bit hitting the surface i should say so the wheel doesn't spin not that it would like the old cars but I guess out of habit I did it. So let's use this Milwaukee. You can see it's in reverse. Okay, and let's see if we can unloosen these nuts. I don't know which ones I already loosened. Okay, wooden budge. All right. Now it also says it's not fully charged, but let me see if I can get a fully charged one. Okay. As you can see, that one is fully charged. Okay. So the humor in all this is I like to have good tools. I had this one laying around in a while back, a couple years ago, swapping out a box on a van, Sprinter van, a buddy of mine, he used a Harbor Freight, and I was like, what? Harbor Freight worked, my Milwaukee didn't. Going backwards, in reverse, backwards, however. Nothing, okay? nothing won't even budge all right so everybody's talking about torque you know 1400 pounds brake power etc you know these things torque up to 2000 and then there's newton's law about motion if it's free and then you're tr starting to tr want to stop motion and 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 torque it down to a certain pound pressure well, that's different than if something's fixed and you're trying to use torque to free it, okay, into motion. It's a whole different dynamic. So anyway, so I went out and bought the Harbor Freight one my buddy had. It was an earthquake, okay, and uh, that didn't work. Took it back. Before that, and I'll link it to my other video, I bought a brand new rigid because I had some batteries 
I got a whole package deal. I don't use rigid, but it was just too good of a deal. All 18 volt. Bought the $280 one. Three, three different settings. 1,360 pounds of brake torque. Didn't work, right? So I go, well, I'm going to have to do it the old-fashioned way. So I had these, or these. I had my little tire bar, my lug nut wrench from Mercedes, okay? And... Um, so let's see, it was that one and this one that I had previously broke. And believe it or not, my daughter broke one of them. Now, watch. Okay, I'm a pretty strong guy and I can, look at that, okay? Okay, I managed to get that one. Now they might have broke loose or they might have loosened up a little bit with the, with the wrench, but you know, it hurts doing that, okay? Now let me drop this down just a sliver. And again, I'm just showing you this, okay? Uh, to show you what the trick is. So I have some hat and galvanized, okay? Keep an eye on the wand, and then here it is. My daughter, I had her do this, all right? There you go. Let me just drop this in here. It's time to use a persuader. All right. Look at that. Look at that. Drop by itself. Watch this. Okay. one hand look at that all right let's try this one I use one hand look at that piece of cake like butter so I said my good daughter can do this my 13 year old daughter did it and uh, my 13 year old daughter did it $700 in tools not counting this one couldn't break them is that a joke gentlemen or what so anyways this is a procedure. Now, once we've got the wheel loose, you can jack it back up. Okay, I have another jack under there. I've got a railroad tie floating around that I'll use to hold it up for security purposes in case the jack slips, All right? And so really, these are good for thinning them out, and uh, that's about it. I've never really had a lot of success with these, um, but there you go. Here's the key. An extension bar. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I didn't like that. Oh, that was a weight. It's a bummer. Yeah, look at that. The weight came off. Huh. Wonder if I could glue that back on. Not gonna matter. Just 50,000 miles later, the wheels have not been balanced. Okay. Now again, you guys could speed all of this up. I don't like to do that. So here's what we've got. Got a lot of funk in there. Okay. Pretty clean. So I'm not gonna worry about any of the lubricants or anything that they try to sell you. Here you go. Okay, top cap. It's a little smaller. Okay, bottom cap. Okay, and you'll see it. And that's right here. Okay, at the bottom, I can show you. And I will do that. Let me loosen this up real quick. So, what I'm going to use. What I did for video purposes, so you can see the two hex nuts that are in there, the black one and the uh, galvanized type, just silver one. And that's, those are the only two, and it's six millimeter, that you have to take out the only two bolts, okay? Again, do I prefer a socket? Uh, absolutely but 
I'll show you that it shouldn't be too difficult with using this technique okay and I'm gonna turn them around so I'll put the short end in and then and then uh, spin it out that one before so let me use this one maybe that one was a little bit different size which would be a bummer that's for sure had me had me a little worried there a minute but she worked fine And we'll take it out. The lower bolt's different. It's black. Okay. Here's the lower bolt. It's black. And what I did was I put it in L-way and then I just leveraged it with my closed end, okay? Hopefully it works over here. Because, and I have another 3,500 brake job that I need to do. So, so here you go. Okay. And then I'm just going to turn this counterclockwise. And there you have it. All right. It's not that big of a deal if you don't have some super high end tools, but it's always better, always, to have the right tools. That's why I went out and tried to buy that uh, that high-end impact. It turned out to be a comet. That was a real bit of humor there. And then to have my daughter and to have my daughter do what those wrenches couldn't do. That was really that was really cute. Now here's the top one, and the top one has got a sleeve on it. You could grease these, put them back. My vehicle's pretty new, so I'm not seeing the need for that. All right. Okay, let me get this all for you. Again, I'm not a mechanic. This is if you want to take the your uh, disc brake housing off. I don't need to do, because I'm not changing my disc brakes. I mean my disc, my rotors, I should say. For what? I don't need to change them. So yeah, you just gotta bump out these sleeves a little bit to open this up and then here's that wire and again you could set it up somewhere um, that is your caliper right here if you want <laughs> you know if you're not a hack okay if you're paying attention okay so that's fine the way I have that now my sensor is on the other side okay it's not on this side and the sensor to let you know, you know, your brakes are going south. All right. And I'll show you. This is real easy, okay? It's kind of nice when you do stuff, you know, yourself. That way when you mess it up, you can go into the closet and start breaking mirrors. Anyway, so this is one pad, okay? There you go, man. All right, now on the passenger side, the sensor... It's just a little clip that slides right in there and you just be real careful. And then the power comes up on a little harness here and taps into that, okay? So that's one, all right? And we'll do the other, look at the other side, okay? All right, all right. 
Here's a clip that holds it in. Let's take that out. Put that back in. Okay. Don't know why this clip is playing with me, but. It just kind of sits in this little relief here. Okay, so that's it. All right, your pads are out. You're gonna put them back in. Probably put the back one in first. All right, and helps if you put them in the wrong right way. It's always a good thing. Okay. Let's take your time. Um, so, the little shoulders here. I put the bottom one in first. Kind of angle it. And there you go. That's it, man. To remove this, it, it takes, you know, a few more bolts and two bolts on this uh, rotor. Uh mount and so here's really the hardest part folks with all this and it's not that hard is to compress back your uh, calipers I put this in early earlier I should say um, so that way it can compress them both a little bit easier I don't know if it's necessary um, but I'm going to do it to show you. I've done it before without any kind of a, a, a shim or a filler. All right. So and you don't need a C-clamp this big. It just, it was convenient for me. Okay. And what you're doing is you are just compressing these. Okay. These calipers, that's it. You're just comp compressing these. Uh, and the only reason why you're compressing them is to put your pad on, okay? Because these have gone out. These have been extending out as your pads wear, okay? These extend out, all right? And... Uh, it's fighting me, so keep going with it as it fights. Good fight. And what you're going to want to do is seat them about right to where the rubber boots are, okay? And your calipers no longer work. Yeah, then then you got to replace your calipers too. And you know, at that point, it's game over. You know. Even with horrible discs, you'll still get breaks. You'll wear out your pads, um, but uh, your calipers ain't working. Yeah, it's a game over. That would be a, a massive deal breaker, okay? And hopefully this these go on real nice. They do. And then you have to kind of nurse that upper boot back in. And that boot just keeps everything lubed up real nice all right and uh remember this one goes up top and we'll get the black one in Now, it may be better or easier to put the bottom one in. That way, you're, it's easier to get to pushed up. And you're not trying to get up high here. That's what I find. It's, it's a little bit easier. And then again, take your uh, whatever kind of a knife setup 
and get that uh, get that where that boot that boot stays clear okay and that's really it that's the only thing you're gonna fight for is is that boot sitting in there real nice other than that uh, it's not that big of a deal there you go yeah so if that nut doesn't that bolt doesn't want to go through then you're hitting your boot and again that boot is just to keep the pin the lubricant really nice okay so I'm tightening these up okay okay so that was tightened up basically it was only another 30 seconds so this one goes on the top and it's basically fastening to like a little rubber boot and it just goes on like any other cap. This one goes on to steel and so it has a little bit different setup. Um, and it goes where the bottom bolt is where I showed you on the hex nuts, okay? And that's it, um, real easy. What's the moral to the story? I'm not a mechanic, I'm 63. If I can do it, you can do it. And you really don't need a lot of tools. I mean, because we know the impacts are a joke. And if you go do a bunch of research, you'll see people going back and forth. Oh, I loosen up tractor bolts and no, I couldn't. Yeah, I could, I used a tire bar. No, couldn't break them back. Blah, blah, blah. It's like when you ask your neighbors, five of your neighbors questions, you'll get six answers. Same thing. All right. Listen, I hope you learned something. I'm always learning. That's why I'm sharing. I hope you subscribe, follow, uh, disseminate. I, you know, share this information and uh, I'll be excited to have some, some better breaks. Thank you. Show me how, just showed you how.